Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Whoa, Davy here. We are coming to you live from Global Farm and Nursery, Echo Gardens. And we are in Fort Myers, Florida. I've never been here. I'm here with Omar, so um, we're gonna check it out. Um, in the video, I'll tell you about all the things I like and I don't like. Hopefully, I like everything. I like plants, so I think I'm really gonna enjoy this place. But yeah, we're here, so we're gonna check it out. Our first visit. As soon as you walk up, they have a little nursery. Omar, say hi to all your fans out there in the YouTube world. Hi, fans. I like that mask. It's cool. Wow, look at this. This is pretty nice. Got a lot of plants. Are these banana trees? Uh, dwarf bananas. Well, these are dwarfs. That's another kind. Dwarf banana trees? I like them. They look real good. Who doesn't like bananas, right? Cherries. That looks like some sort of succulent. Oh, yeah. Check out the thorns. What is this? Chaya? Heard of that I always see stuff like that in Okeechobee in my parents' neighborhood. They get real tall, right? Uh, look at the little pineapple plants. Does this look pineapple sugar? Look at all those bananas. Oh. Loaded. And that sugar cane? Yeah, that is sugar cane. Look that at that. Like thing I ate, but it's... What is that? This is a Tell everybody what you ate. Forgot, what did I eat? A sapote, mame sapote. Mame sapote. Oh, that orange thing we eat? like orange, yeah. This, I don't know what this is though. They don't have it labeled. What's this over here they got bagged off? They got the fruit in bags, I guess. Huh? Loquat. And I'm assuming they do that to protect it from insects or birds. Huh. So here we have a strawberry tree, which I have never seen before. At least I don't think. And it's blooming. It smells weird. And it doesn't look like strawberries, but it has lots of, lots of berries. It's big. And then I want to go over here. I want to show you guys this. We have lots of dragon fruit at our house, and I've never seen anybody do that. But that's a good idea to support it use a tire because it gets top heavy and it just hangs and wants to grow on everything so the tire actually works it might not look very attractive but i think that's a creative idea I love it. so if you guys come out here to echo garden as soon as you get up here and you get out of your vehicle you see this nice size nursery lots of plants for sale so you can take a plant home be your souvenir for the day if you come out here but it's huge look at it it doesn't look very big but once you start walking around it's a nice size nursery so if you like fig plants it says they suggest growing your figs in containers it's easier to control the soil too if it's in a pot so Omar's gonna try the fruit off this strawberry tree, even though they don't look like strawberries at all. He said if we could try it. Yeah, we got permission. We're not just picking stuff off the tree. Yeah, we got So that's what it looks like. Or you can just let it grow out. But it's 
It kind of looks like a miniature, like really small version of a cherry tomato. Okay, so I'm gonna try one too. It is sweet. It's really strong. It's not bad though. It's different. I like it though. Look at this. You can grab a bag and fill it with produce. That's pretty cool. And the prices are really reasonable. So if you see something you like and you want to grow it at home, just get some seeds on your way out. Look at everything. I'm guessing they stopped in the restroom. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Sure. I love it out here already. It's so nice and cool. You're not sweating to death. Lots of shade. And I think we got lucky today because there's only six of us on this tour. So. If you want, yeah. Oh, we'll look at the chickens. So right now we're gonna meet up with, I guess, our tour guide and watch a video first. And then I guess we go on the tour. You have to make what you need. And the idea is to encourage these farmers to develop simple tools, devices, techniques that they can use that make them more efficient, more productive, and therefore help them have an easier life at what they're doing, which is very difficult, scratching out a living in some very harsh climates. ECHO is a global Christian organization that equips people with agricultural resources and skills to reduce hunger and improve the lives of the poor. For more than 30 years, we've been working around the world to answer these questions and provide solutions to those who need the most. By providing agricultural technical support to small-scale farmers and those who work with them, ECHO is providing practical solutions, ideas and resources to help people help themselves and in the cycle of poverty. At regional impact centers in some of the most difficult places to grow food on Earth, we're connecting local agricultural development workers with the seeds, training, ideas, and connections they need to make a world of difference. This is the Echo Effect. It starts with an idea, an agricultural technique, seed, or appropriate technology. These ideas travel through partner organizations, development projects, and individual development workers and missionaries to small-scale farmers around the world. It doesn't stop with just an idea. Farmers try out these ideas, learning what works best, and sharing both what they've learned and the knowledge that they have with ECHO. From this knowledge, ECHO can make better recommendations, and the impact is multiplied. The process begins again, improving the result each time empowering farmers to make a difference in their families and communities and enabling them to demonstrate good ideas to other farmers. Hi, my name is Doug. I'm going to be your docent today. Again, I encourage you to ask as many questions as you want. If you don't understand something, please ask. I'll do my best to explain it. Ready to go? All right, we're going to test. So we follow the leader. 
Yeah. Oh, behind, there's our tour guide. Yeah, we'll we'll stick behind. We're gonna we're gonna be in the back of everybody. Our group of six got a lot bigger. I think there's about maybe twenty of us now. They a lot of these people are from the morning uh, tour. They have a different tour. This is the fruit from the cecropia tree. This is edible. Uh, you can eat this fruit. You, what you do is you peel off the skin that's on the fruit here, and this part is edible. Uh, if someone wants to try it, they're welcome to try it. Just, peel, just break off a little piece there and you try, try it. Try That's all you know I'm gonna try. <laughs> Take this part right there. Oh, here you go. Is that finger? Huh? Finger? No, it's, it's called cecropia. These are like fingers that grow in the air. Just pull really off a hunk. <laughs> Everyone's gonna eat a finger. Ian, you, um, <laughs> Kelly, you tried? I will try. You got the whole thing. Oh wow, you're greedy. <laughs> Anybody want to try this piece? Uh, try the finger. Let everybody know. Uh -oh. It kind of reminds me of a uh, kind of like a kiwi texture. What is it? This is fruit from this fruit tree. That's the tree that's right over there. This is the fruit that grows on it. It's not real sweet, but it is sweet. It's different. Yeah, there's the tree. I'll try to get a close up of it. Can you all see that? It does look like little fingers. Well, you see that the fruit that's up there, you see these fingers up there. Very uh, unique tree. Unique for sure. Water. You have to have water to live on. You cannot live without water. There are basically two kinds of water in the developing world. Water that's above the ground, surface water, like that pond over there. Oh, yeah, and then there's water below the ground, groundwater. About a half a billion, that's a lot of people, about a half a billion people rely on untreated surface water to live on. They're going to drink the water out of that pond. Just drink it. Uh, and there's lots of bad stuff in that water. There's bacteria and other stuff in there, and, and, it, and it's not really healthy. And many millions of people will die because of you using this water that's not good. Uh, and also now, this is an average. A person will walk 3.7 miles a day to get surface water in developing countries. That's the average. Some more, some less. Average is out to 3.7 miles. And you're going to take with you the equivalent of a five-gallon bucket to put that water in. A five-gallon bucket of water weighs 44 pounds. So you're going to carry 44 pounds of water, 3.7 miles. That gets pretty old. So if you can show people how to get water from below the ground, uh, they're not walking 3.7 miles, and the quality of the water is better. Depending on how deep the well is, that depends on what the quality of your water is. If it's a fairly shallow well, it's still going to you're still going to treat that water, purify that water, because there's still probably some bad stuff in it. But the deeper the water, the better it is. If it's 100 feet deep, that water is perfect. Now, these, this, this is a shallow well here. This well right here is about 20 feet deep. Advantages of this well is I can hand dig this well. I can, I can dig this by myself. I don't have to pay somebody to dig this well. I'll dig it. I'll start with a big hole, get down to a small hole. I'm down there 20 feet. And so I've got somebody up there with a bucket without a rope, and I'm going to fill the bucket with dirt. They're going to take it up, dump it, bring it back down, and, gonna, and that's how I'm going to dig this. I'll probably have several buckets going back and forth. But I can dig this well. And I hit my water, I put my casing in there with my lifting device, I backfill it, and I've got my well. Okay? And, that, and, uh, and this is what uh, is called a lifting device, where I'm lifting water. And then if you take this, now who wants to pump this water? Come on over here and pump this water. <laughs> you can do the next one. And you're gonna pump this. Right? You have to look back. Come on, there you go. Let's just pump the water. I can go slow. I can go slow. See what she's doing now is this what I thought. Lift this like this. I'm bringing lifting water. Okay. Then I go when I bring this up. I'm going down to get more water. 
then I lift it, I get water, and I bring it up, and I go down to get more water. That's all. That's how this is working. It's called a lifting pump, yeah, yeah. where I'm actually lifting it. Yeah, cool. Now this one here, okay, now it's your turn. You're going to pump this. There you go. There you pump check valves in there. And this check valve is in here just like this. I've got one down here that's stationary. I've got another one that's going up and down. So when this goes down like this, this flap opens up and lets water come in. Uh -huh. Then when, it, when I lift it, this flattens out, traps the water, and I lift it. When I lift it, the check valve is down here, the stationary one, that opens up because I created a suction and lets water come in. So I'm just going back and forth, lifting that water with this check valve. Yeah. Something happens with yeah. this. I, this is a check valve, a piece of plastic, some holes drilled in it, a piece of rubber, and it's my, that's my check valve. So it's easy, to, if something happens to this, I can fix it pretty easy. So when you're helping people, that's one thing you need to be aware of is, is how they have to manage the system. Can they do that? It's, you know, and this one is pretty simple. It, 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 uh, it works pretty well. Disadvantages of this, this, in a drought season, this could dry up. Also, the water that's only 20 feet deep, uh, I'm still probably going to purify this water, but it's water. If this system I can manage pretty easy. Does anybody know why I got this barricade here? This question. barricades here to keep my animals away from the well. When my animals come in here, their waste falls on the ground uh, and it washes down my well, contaminates my well. So I'm going to have gates over here so I can get in, and but the animals can't. That's all this barrier is doing. Doesn't have to be this fancy. It could be thorn bushes, whatever, just something that's going to keep my animals from coming in. Now, this is also what we call community well, okay? 60, 70, 80 people are going to come here to get their water every day. And what happens is typically in the morning, they're going to come and get their water. Uh, and uh, there's, there's going to be 60 or 70 people waiting for their turn. And they look forward to that because not only are they getting their water, it's time to talk to all these people, find out what's going on in the community so they don't mind waiting because they get to find out what's going on then they because it's, it's probably the only time of the day they're going to see some of these people mm -hmm. then they're going to go out back off and go to work the rest of the day but they've got their water so typically it's, it's also kind of a social event too they get their water but they're also getting to find out what's going on it's their email <laughs> 41 pump and that's down here uh again that one there probably three to five hundred dollars. Okay, this one here probably twenty to thirty thousand dollars. That's going to be a lot more money. I got to pay from somebody for drilling this, putting the casing, the electrical pump. I got to build the power, the tank. Uh, I got to shut off uh, in there. Uh, it, it's just a lot more money. Okay, but the water that's hundred feet deep. I don't have to purify this water. It's good water. It's ready to go, and you get pretty good pressure. That water is coming out not from a pump, that's coming from that tower. That's all it is is gravity. That's how much pressure I got. So once you got the water up there, it comes out with pretty good pressure. So uh, this is much better than that, but this also costs a lot more money. And let's just say that somebody had lots of money and they donated their money to do this, to build this well and put it in, okay? They paid for that. but. This it, people, whoever have this, have to be able to manage this. If something goes wrong, they have to be able to, to fix it. They either have to be able to have the skills to fix it or the funding to pay somebody to fix it. If they don't, they're walking 3.7 miles to get water because this doesn't work. So when you're helping people, you have to be sure they can manage what you're giving them to, to, to use. Even if they didn't pay for it themselves, you, someone gave it to them, they have to manage the system and be able to take care of it when problems arise. But again, these are two typical ways. That this pump here, the, the, the electricity for this pump is run by solar panels on the top. So that generates electricity. So again, this is this this is this is better than that. But again, this costs a lot more money and it, it's got a, a few more issues that could go wrong if something gotta go really fast to start with. So it's pretty hard. Especially for somebody, you know. Can she try it a little? She can try it, yeah. Okay, let's go, give it a shot. Go ahead and step up on there. Okay, and step, hold on to there. Wait. It's going to come out there. Okay. And what you have to do with this is you got to prime it. Go, 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 go. 
I don't think I've ever seen something like that, but if you fill those with water, instead of carrying them, you just pull them. It's a lot easier way to transport water. So, I think these are awesome. That cactus. It's like a bigger version of the one we saw over at the nursery. Oh, yeah. This is a clay you guys. Uh, this this is probably you know where, let's say it's 110 degrees outside okay you're gonna go in there it's gonna be at least 15 degrees cooler inside the house maybe more than that even so in the heat of the day when it gets really hot that's where you're gonna go and also at night you're, that's where you're gonna go for otherwise you're outside pretty much on most of the day you're welcome to go inside check it out go ahead Yeah, he was right. The temperature dropped quite a bit. It's very, very cool in here. Wow. <laughs> you don't even need AC. That's awesome. This is called a Moringa seed. That's the seed with the husk on it. This is the seed all by itself. And you'll see this seed. I'll take one seed like this. And I'm going to take that seed. I'm going to crush it into a powder. And then I'm going to drop it in a, in a, a, a bottle of water. I'm going to shake it up real good and then let it sit. And that's, it, that ring of powder is going to settle to the bottom. As it does, all the bacteria is going to attach itself to that powder. It's all going to go down to the bottom of the bottle. It's going to actually kill the bacteria that's in there. So all of that water on top, I can pour that water off and it's good, clean water. So I can use one seed for one bottle of water. So, but I need, it's, 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 uh, I need lots of bottles and lots of seeds, right? It, it's a, it works to be cleaned and used over and over and over. So this will last a very long time, but it's a slow process. Cause I'm gonna fill this bucket with water. I let this thing hang down like this and it's gonna drip down through that filter, but it takes a long time. So what, what their answer to that is, well, put two of them on. It goes faster. Mm -hmm. They're right, but it's also now from a 60 to bucks to $120. Mm -hmm. So again, it's gonna cost more, uh, but this works really well, but it's slow, but it, it does a good job. Mm -hmm. And you can reuse the filter, you can clean the filters. They make one that actually sits on a water bottle now that you can backwash. So is that right? Like okay. Yeah. And then this is a Berkey filter. And down here in Florida, lots of people yeah. live on a well. They have well water. And that water might have a little odor to it or a little taste to it. This will take that out. Not only will it purify the water, it will take the smell and taste out of the water. It really cleans it up nice. It's got uh, ceramic filters inside, uh, coated with charcoal. And uh, this does an excellent job of purifying water, but it's, this is expensive. And these filters, will, you can do 3,000 gallons of water, uh, and then you have to replace the filters too. So it's, it's, it does a great job but it's expensive. A bunch of boxes, a box inside of a box, inside of a box, stuffed with paper, with whatever stuffing I got. Then I take my lid off, and I got uh, styrofoam stuffing inside here. I put my pot down inside, and what I'll do is I'll get it boiling up on, let's say, three rocks or whatever. I got it boiling for about 15 minutes. Then I'm gonna take it and put it in here, put my, my stuffing back on there, my lid back on, and it's gonna cook on its own heat for about six hours. That's my crock pot. And then, and it, it's, it's, uh, it's, it'll finish cooking my, my, my food using its own heat from the boiling that it was doing. Here's another one, this is another fireless cooker. It's a little bit neater, because it's one that's uh, uh, like a styrofoam cooler almost that you can use. Put your pot down inside, seal it up, cook on its own heat. Clay expands and shrinks sand does not. So you want the most, you want 80% sand, 20% clay, because you don't want these bricks to shrink and expand. So how do I know what I've got? So I'm gonna take what I'm using and I'm gonna figure out how much sand, how much clay I've got. So I'm gonna put, take some soil, put it in a jar, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna grab a bunch of what I'm using, not, and I'm gonna put it in there, shake it up, and let it sit overnight. And you can see how it's settled out 
And I'm going to pass this around so you can see it, actually. You can see two different layers there. The lower layer is sand, the upper layer is clay. Sand is heavier than clay. So when it straight settles out, you can figure out what your ratio is. Right there, that looks like about 60-40. That's not good enough. I'm going to add more sand to get it up to 20-80. So then I'm going to make my bricks. Well, how, those, these, what you're looking at back there are two brick presses. And what we do is, is you will put your stuff in there. They got a big lever that comes over and, and it compresses that. Then when you bring it back, it pops a brick up and it's a brick that's, and, and now you want every brick to be the same. You don't want a big brick, a little brick. You want every one the same. How do I do that? What you're gonna do is you're gonna take, a, you got a scale and you're gonna weigh every batch. To, you know, when I get the proper size to make the brick I want to make, I'm going to record that weight and weigh every batch before it goes in the press so that every brick comes out the same. That way I'm not going to have big bricks, little, little bricks, I'm going to have every one the same, I can build a house with them. Then we add about 10% concrete in these bricks because we don't want them to, we don't fire these bricks, we air cure these bricks. So we air cure these for several weeks and then we can use these in building, if you took our farm tour, you'll actually see a house that we made with these bricks. But uh, we've, you, as we go through here, you're gonna see other things that we've made using these bricks. And these bricks are a great building material. They'll last a long time. Thank you. Now, this here is an adobe brick. The difference between that brick and this, there I carefully established what kind of soil I had, what ratios I had. Here I don't care, I just took whatever I had I didn't evaluate, I just mixed in some straw and instead of a press, I used those, those two by four frames. I just packed those full of this stuff and I made what they call an adobe brick. And again, this is not as good as that, but it's a lot bigger and it's gonna, it's gonna wear away, but it's gonna take a while to do it. But that's better, but this, this works. Now, here's the, here, here's the baby. This is a brick, this is a, a a plastic bottle that's filled with trash and it's a brick. And I'm going to build a house with these. Pass that around so you can actually see that. I got a couple other pictures here. There's another one you'll see where you actually that, see the arches. They actually made those arches using these bottles. <laughs> And so what they do is you will take this bottle, you'll stuff it, you can use trash, you can use dirt, you can use whatever you got, and just pack it in there really tight, and, and, and then, you, then what you do is you will mortar these bottles in just like bricks, using mud, mortar, whatever you got, uh, and then what this is on the inside, and they'll actually plaster it up, you won't even see the, the top of the bottle, and this is the outside on, on the building. What they typically do is they'll paint these little nubs here different colors to, so you get a little design on your house and so it makes it look a little prettier. But this is, you can build a solid house with this. When you think about this, 80% of the bottles produced throughout the world are not recycled. 80%. I, I, I've been told, I've never seen it, but I've been told in the Pacific somewhere there's an island as big as the state of Texas made up with floating plastic. Mm. Wow. Uh, and this takes that plastic and I'm building something. I actually took myself, I made 150 of these bottles. And I stuffed them with plastic grocery bags. It takes about 50 bags to make one bottle. I just stuffed them in there, ran them in there, tight as you could. And, and, and uh, they actually were a little bit better than this. Uh, and, and we're gonna build a wall here using these bottles so you can actually see what the, the process of how they're made. But again, what you do is too is, I'm not gonna go get all these bottles, but you guys are. I'm gonna get you guys and say, hey, I'm gonna give you a little something, you go gather up these bottles for me. So the kids are all gonna go out and gather bottles, bring them back, and I'm gonna give them something for doing that. Then I'm gonna have some other people here sitting in a circle filling these bottles with whatever I got. And then I got some more people building a wall. It takes about 15,000 to 20,000 bottles to make a house. That's a lot of bottles. Uh, and it's a lot of stuffing too. <laughs> but it, 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 it works a really, really nice house. In, in, in places like uh, India, 
in China, in Africa, they're using this process to make schools, or all kinds of buildings out of these bottles. It's really, really neat. What she's doing is she's turning this grinder. And six months collapse, it gets a nice plate size for eating. So again, it's my protein there, my veggies over here. So how do you remove the ammonia again? The, this is the, the ammonia base, and there's actually uh, bags on there. And in the bags, there's, there, 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 there's a, a process that takes place that actually converts the um, uh, uh, ammonia, nitride, yeah. ammonia to nitrite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will clean these filters, the solid filter, every two weeks. This filter I'll clean once a month. So that prevents the fish from getting through. Hmm? Yeah, I think he's duckweed. Oh, that's duckweed. That grows everywhere. That's what we feed the tilapia, and we do clean the collars too. So that's what they feed the uh, tilapia. So we found out it's, it's cheaper to, to buy the pellets than to try to make them with uh, And so we feed these pellets in the, the duckweed. The duckweed See that? Yeah. That's it's apparently called duckweed in the fishy stuff. In fact, if you went over to the top of that thing, you can get in there. Uh, they're going to be but again, uh, their tilapia are nice plate size and they're about this big. Okay. And it's, it's, it's a, a good balance of protein and my vegetables here. And you'll see that this, all this is here is uh, PVC pipe coated with, covered with plastic. Or we over there, we do use some styrofoam that we use. You can use either way. Oh yeah, styrofoam, styrofoam would work out, yeah. To get in some places. So we actually use a PVC pipe. Or we use bamboo also. Yeah. Bamboo works too. Check out that passion fruit vine. It's huge. All the way into the tree. All the way up in the tree. Look at this little house. Is that a light going? It's a leader light. Two liter bottle full of water and a bit of chlorine to magnify the sun rays. That's awesome. Like well, they are very good. Look at the yeah, mango tree. The skin is very chewy. Yeah, but it's really yummy. Yeah. I used to eat when I was Yeah, Jaboti Kaba is what that's called. Okay, so we'll see. Everybody loves mangoes. At least I do. We got some mango trees in our backyard, and I can't wait. We can't wait. Yeah, we can't wait. <laughs> we want some mangoes. Green plants, put them in here, and we put them right in the top there. That goes all the way down to the bottom. We'll push that stuff in there. It's going to decompose in there, and it's going to make a gas which comes over here, and it's going to make a liquid waste that comes over here. The liquid waste is fertilizer, and the gas we use for cooking with. Over here, we have all different sizes. We have bigger ones here. We got smaller ones down there, and we'll hook them up to the proper size with a hose clamp around the, the bamboo. We'll, we'll put this in the cup, we'll tighten that clamp around there, and we're going to push a mixture of borax and water, 10% borax mixed with, with water, 
and it's going to and then we add a blue dye. You'll see that blue dye here. We'll push that blue dye through so that when it comes from one end to the other, when it comes out, you see that blue coming out. You know it's done its job. It's pushed all the sap out of the bamboo. It's now going to last 20 years. Yes. It's a powdery stuff that you buy in a 50-pound bag, and you mix this borax powder with water. Uh, it's detergent. Yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. Have, you ever, have you ever made the uh, gag with um, uh, white glue, and the glue, you put a little bit of borax in water, and it turns into uh, slime? That's, that's what they use. You can get it at Publix now. Yeah. Yeah. Like now you're you sending that all the way through? Yes. Now, so I remember you saying that these yeah, are solid. Yeah, those are solid nodes, but what it does, it goes right through the grain of the bamboo, so the nodes don't stop it. Gotcha. And you'll see the ends there, and look at all this bamboo, this stuff they've done already, they push that blue through all the way through, and then it comes out the other end, and then you know it's done its job. Now that bamboo's gonna last 20 years. Mm -hmm. It takes about, uh, for about a 14 foot piece of bamboo, it takes 45 minutes to do that. But we've got a pump over a pump, here. Right? Yep. Uh, but we actually, I've seen them do this with a bicycle pump and a pressure tank, and you do the same thing. So there's all different ways you can do this. But we can do uh, about five or six pieces at one time and push that borax right straight through. What type of pressure? Uh, it's not a whole lot. It's maybe about 40 pounds, something like that. So it's not a whole lot of pressure. What do you do with the residue when you collect the other side? You throw it away. Yeah, you gotta dispose of it. Because once you can't reuse it because you got the sap and the bamboo in it. Yeah. Isn't this kind of the organic oil? Yeah, yeah, it breaks down. Yeah, it breaks down. It's, it's nothing that's going. In fact, I had a gentleman here from the Philippines a couple years ago. He told me I lived in a house just like this when he was a kid. Uh, and this house was made with bamboo. The floor is bamboo. The walls are bamboo. The posts are bamboo. Uh, the uh, joints are all bamboo. The only thing is, is the metal roof. Uh, and there's a couple of wooden uh, things, but everything else is bamboo. And this house has no damage from the hurricane. We lost uh -huh. 60, 70 trees. This house stood no more problem. That's crazy. Thank you so much, Doc. You're welcome. Thank you for coming. So hey guys, we just finished the tour and it was really, really educational. Doug was our tour guide. He did an amazing job. I was surprised to see a lot of different types of plants a lot of edible plants yeah this place has a lot of edible plants but if you come here i would suggest bring a bottle of water Maybe it gets really hat. hot yeah it gets very very hot but um it's really really nice it was a small group very educational i actually didn't even think it was going to be that educational but i learned a lot and overall yeah if you haven't come to echo uh, nursery or the gardens you should definitely check it out here in fort myers it was really nice.